Credible evidence suggests that the first people that got coronavirus worked at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And a new report tells us that US taxpayers funded it. So in a way, we, if you're a US taxpayer, caused and funded the whole pandemic. Thanks a lot, us. <laughs> Hello there, you 6.4 million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining us on this voyage together towards truth and freedom. And what a voyage it is when the truth is continually concealed, undermined and denied by the most powerful institutions in the world, whether that's the state or the mainstream media. Turn on your notification bell right now so you get our content when we make it daily and join us on Rumble. Five days a week we make this show where we have interviews like the one we had with Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger where they broke this story for the first time outside of their substack that the first people that contracted coronavirus worked by coincidence at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Now there's no evidence that tells us that they hadn't just been in a bat cave for their own reason, brushing up against bats, sniffing bats, maybe even licking bats. But that, coupled with the fact that US taxpayers funded that research starts to demonstrate perhaps why particular narratives were amplified and others were undermined, withdrawn and shut down. This is an important conversation about power. It involves some of the most influential institutions in the world. What can we learn from this? How can we prevent it happening again? And I don't just mean more pandemics, I mean more global corruption. Details on the origins of the coronavirus suggest that the virus escaped from a Chinese lab in Wuhan. Of course it did. It's so strange, isn't it, the way that this has unfolded. Let me know in the chat if you already have a kind of fatigue around this, if you've like, stopped concentrating on it. The way to keep yourself engaged and interested is by reminding yourself about what happened during that two-year period, the way that information was censored, the way that people were ridiculed, the way that certain solutions were quite aggressively pushed, the rhetoric on the news, people should be shamed. All of this is just months ago, months ago, and now being revealed explicitly and plainly is you were right the whole time. Fox News Chief Washington Correspondent Mike Emanuel tonight with the new report and the findings on who were the first to be infected. Not only did we confirm that the virus came from the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China. Also, just at a glance, it don't look safe enough, does it? It looks too old. It looks like a terrible high school building. They're not trying hard enough in there. They're probably not washing their hands. They're definitely not more than a metre and a half per side. And I bet they weren't even vaccinated. A new report on the online platform Substack says scientists at the lab in Wuhan were the first COVID-19 patients in the fall of 2019 while conducting controversial gain-of-function research. The story names the scientists as Ben Hu, Yu Ping, and Yan Zhu. Chinese scientists Ben Hu, Ping Yu, and Yan Zhu were the first humans to contract COVID-19. Don't be childish and don't try and do that. Who's got COVID? What? Who's got COVID? Zhu's got COVID. It came from a zoo now? No, look, one's called Hu and one's called Zhu. Don't be racist. That was the problem in the first place. FBI Director Christopher Wray told Brett Baer the Bureau's theory about COVID's origin back on February 28th. The FBI has for quite some time now assessed that the origins of the pandemic are most likely a potential lab incident in Wuhan. Yet the White House chief medical advisor during the pandemic has offered other explanations. Totally consistent with a jump of a species from an animal to a human. We have an open mind, but it looks very, very much like this was a natural occurrence. Be good if it was a natural occurrence, because that would mean it wasn't entirely my fault. Dr. Robert Redfield was CDC director during the pandemic. I'm very disappointed in how he's responded to this. Largely, I think it's grounded in his advocacy for gain-of-function research. Most scientists are exactly that. People that are interested in facts. Science can lead to dogma because research and experimentation can lead to temporary conclusions that are then held on to. But when science becomes commercialized, commodified, institutionalized, when they have financial relationships with pharmaceutical companies, when they have financial relationships with other nations, when they fund research that is potentially dangerous because it could one day be profitable. And I don't mean profitable to our species, profitable commercially. You know how the pharmaceutical industry is run. You know how they lobby. Does the pharmaceutical industry have no interest in mind but for the health and well-being of ordinary human beings? Of course it doesn't. It's 
a commercial enterprise. If they can heal a few people along the way, that's fantastic. I'm not being reductive about science. I am reliant and dependent upon medical experts for the well-being of important members of my family continually. And one of the things that gives me faith in them is knowing that they are not driven by commercial objectives. Can we say the same about Anthony Fauci at this point? Can we say the same about the organizations and bureaucracies that surround the pharmaceutical industry that funded this kind of research that clearly pushed one narrative, presumably in order to avoid further analysis? I don't think we can, can we? Kansas Senator Roger Marshall says these latest revelations make China and Fauci look bad. <laughs> that's the news. Wait a minute. These revelations make you look bad. No, oh, that's not very scientific. Get out of here. Who? You. What? The nonpartisan government accountability office is out with a new report which found that U.S. taxpayer dollars flowed to Chinese entities, including the Wuhan lab, ahead of the COVID-19 outbreak. Just spend a moment reflecting on the fact that during all that time you were watching funerals on YouTube, you were locked in your house, you were worried about whether to wear masks, you were worried about whether or not to take particular medications, you were blaming other people for not taking medications, you were wondering which news sources you could rely on, you were querying conspiracy theories versus facts, you were wondering what information should be safely censored. The whole time, you were paying for the whole Farago. You paid for this? Well, no, you didn't pay for it. Who paid for it? No, look, they caused it, but they didn't pay for it. Few. No, few wasn't involved. US taxpayers supported research in three Chinese labs that included risky gain-of-function experiments with coronaviruses at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, a new government report found on Wednesday. Maybe have risky gain-of-function research at Wuhan Institute of Virology, but could we vote on that? Wouldn't you like to be invited to participate in those kind of things. We're about to spend your money on gain of function research at a lab that we suspect might be a bit shady about the old window shutting and hand washing. Are you down with that? Oh, uh, no, how about a road? Not an option. You can bomb Afghanistan again. Um, all right, bomb Afghanistan then. Now, we can't fund our important research without money from the NIH and all them other agencies. In fact, we also need your money, ironically. <laughs> what I will say to you is our commercial partners are reliable and the commercials for their products are fun. Here's one right now. Stay to the end. Are we on the verge of an environmental apocalypse? Is AI going to destroy all mankind? Are we powerless to choose peace in the face of military-industrial complex objectives? And where the heck are my car key now? Dealing with questions like those ones is enough to make you exhausted, but thanks to GenuCell skincare, you can still look and feel amazing. Like me. You'd never know I care about anything. Not with this eyelid treatment. Straight, look at that now. The eyelids have never been better. Genucell Skincare is a natural line of products for both men and women, whoever you are. Nothing is tested on animals, so they're completely cruelty-free with natural, high-quality ingredients, and everything is made exclusively in the USA. And I know exactly what I'm getting with their products because everything is still formulated to this day from the same pharmacist. His name's George. All right, George. He founded the company over 20 years ago. You'd not know it, though, because he looked like a nine-year-old boy because of these products. So if you're invested in your health and personal wellness like I am, then start and end your day with GenuCell. Their Summer Essentials package is currently available at an incredible introductory price. Just go to GenuCell.com dot com forward slash brand and take an extra 10% of your entire order. That's genucell.com forward slash brand. The gift of eternal life, larger reproductive organ, world peace, genucell. The National Institutes of Health and US Agency for International Development, USAID, provided 2.2 million, more or less, in grant funding to the Chinese research institutions between 2014 and 2021, according to the Government Accountability Office. The report shows 1.4 million in subgrants allocated by the Manhattan-based EcoHealth Alliance went to the Wuhan Institute of Virology, where hazardous research was conducted on bat coronaviruses. If you're going to do research on bat coronaviruses, it should be hazardous, should it? Shouldn't be risky. Risky and dangerous. You might think that 1.4 and 2.2 are relatively low figures, but the fact is, is at the very beginning, as soon as that bell started ringing and that siren started going off and that flag started being waved, and Andy Fauci, who throughout it was held up as some bastion of sensible science, oh, look at him behind Trump going, oh, and pulling a face. We can rely on him. Why don't we have him in charge? Well, he could have said, bloody hell, this is a bit inconvenient and embarrassing because we've been funding the Wuhan Institute of Virology, so if it did come 
come from there. I'm almost sort of directly responsible or indirectly responsible at very least. That should have been made clear as soon as they knew it. And it seems from email exchanges, they were considering the possibility it came from Wuhan. And obviously, one might imagine they knew about their own financial involvement or the fact that the agencies that they run are involved in the regulation and allocation of grants. So the whole way that this has been handled, obviously, involves obfuscation and deceit. How do you feel about trusting those same bodies, those same organisations, that same system and mindset with ongoing current issues right now? The way that you're conveyed information on a host of stories, the way that you're taxed on a raft of issues intersects with these same agencies and certainly this same mindset. Today, the GAO confirmed that US taxpayer dollars awarded from the National Institutes of Health and USAID were ultimately used for research by entities in China, including the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which was known to be doing coronavirus research, said House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence Chairman Mike Turner. We have long argued that the American people deserve the truth about COVID-19's origin and continue to take concrete actions to declassify intelligence related to the pandemic. There's a broader argument to assess here. The role that we afford science and particularly corporatized pharmacological medical science and the institutions around it. Of course, throughout the pandemic, they were presented as the solution to the problem. Whereas this narrative suggests that they are the cause of the problem. As long as the narrative remains, oh, it just emerges from nature. What's nature? It's like saying this just happened because of luck, circumstance, chance, the way things are. And science has come in to solve it. Science has no moral quality. Science is simply the investigation of data and conclusions drawn from exploration, experimentation and trial. But when science is purposed politically and economically, it is no longer science. It's just a set of tools to serve a political aim and an economic aim. And what we were arguing throughout the pandemic period is you're calling this science, but it's only an aspect of science. You're shutting down some voices. You're elevating other voices. Now we're reaching the point where it's becoming difficult to ignore the possibility that American taxpayer dollars were ultimately spent at a substandard facility that caused this pandemic through malpractice or negligence or whatever you want to call it. The funding figure may not reflect the full amount since sub-awards of fewer than $30,000 don't need to be reported in government records. It also shows you how bureaucracy is used to mask and conceal facts that there's one agency, then another agency and a sub-grant. It's not clear, is it? And given that something so significant has happened, it's obviously an opportunity to review the way these funding procedures take place and whether or not you even want experiments of this nature taking place at all. A 2017 video aired by Chinese state-run television reportedly shows who watching a lab worker handle specimens while neither is wearing protective gear, according to public. If they were worried about being infected in the field, they would need full body suits with no gaps, said Alina Chan, who co-authored the book Viral, The Search for the Origin of COVID-19. She added that scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology conducted their research at a lower biohazard safety level of BSL-2, when we now know that the pandemic virus is even capable of escaping a BSL-3 lab and infecting fully vaccinated young lab workers. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the former director of NIH's National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, had denied to Congress earlier that year that US funding went to the controversial research project, calling it a modest collaboration with very respectable Chinese scientists who were world experts on coronavirus. Now it looks like clumsy Chinese scientists who weren't wearing the proper lab gear, explicitly funded, and oh look, Anthony Fauci's retired now, so he's nicely out of the way. All of the obscuring, obfuscation, and doublespeak has led to something that many people suspected right back in early 2020. That virus has come from a lab. That lab takes funding from American interests. The American government knows about this, and they're pushing an agenda and a narrative that it's come from nature in order to avoid the responsibility for causing this in the first place. That doesn't mean that the whole thing was a conspiracy, although there are plenty of people out there who believe that it is. But you can sort of follow a trail from the inception of this disease to enormous profits and expedient actions for government that would start to make it look like it was either a colossal mistake that we were lied about or worse than that. Let me know in the chat in the comments which you think it is. Fauci, who retired at the end of last year, tangled with Senator Rand Paul, in particular over the research, telling the 
senator during a May 11th, 2021 hearing that he was entirely and completely incorrect that the NIH has not never and does not now fund gain-of-function research in the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Well, that's a lie under oath, isn't it? Let me know in the chat. Fauci has also repeatedly downplayed evidence of a lab leak and argued for the likelihood of SARS-CoV-2 occurring naturally. Well, there's two reasons why he might have argued for a natural emergence. One being that's because he genuinely believes that it's a possibility. And another reason might be because if he is somehow culpable for the emergence of this virus, it would undermine his entire career. A career that many people argue has been smeared elsewhere with comparable errors that we can't go into now on this channel, but that we'd certainly go into on Rumble. The whole idea that science provided a solution to a problem caused by nature now looks increasingly unreliable. Increasingly, it looks like scientific experimentation underwritten by a corporate and commercial and profit-driven agenda has led to a crisis that affected the lives of everybody on the planet one way or another. And then we charged with coming up with a solution the same people that caused the problem in the first place while allowing affiliated organizations to suggest to us the way that we should all conduct our own lives during that period. And the fact that we're being asked to just forget about it now, the fact that we shut down opposing voices that were trying to present views that we now know to be true shows you that this can be used as a kind of scalpel to cut apart the corpse of a corrupt and decaying system, one that clearly is in need of much deeper analysis on the ongoing post-mortem of a system that appears to be dying before our very eyes. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. Join us every day on Rumble. More important than that, please stay free.